Since Hyundai introduced Santa Cruz last year, there's really very few changes for 2023 model year, other than some equipment changes on the inside on different trim levels, as well as some of the packages, like this one that includes the activity pack. Now, today I'm gonna take you on a complete tour of this vehicle. We're gonna check it out from the exterior, interior, jump inside of it, take it for the test drive, see how it drives, and that's all thanks to Gettle Hyundai of Lakewood, Florida. So big shout out to those guys. I'm going to put their link in the description of this video as well as the phone number. If you're interested in the Hyundai, don't hesitate. Give them a call. Now, my name is Matt here on Matt the Car Guy. I post two car reviews every single week. If that's something that is up your alley, do me a favor. Check out the rest of this channel. Hit that little subscribe button after you watch this video and liked it. Don't forget to leave me a like. So what exactly is an SAV, you ask? Well, according to Hyundai, it's this. The sport activity vehicle combines the comfort of the drive of a regular SUV with the utility of a pickup truck. While in front, there's not much differences between this and the Hyundai Tucson. There's gonna be a lot more on the side, but let's start here, right there with the hood. You see this bulge in the middle, kind of tapered off on both sides. And if you do like the color of it, they call it the blue stone. Now, as far as the lights, you do have a very unique to a Tucson and the Santa Cruz setup with those LED lights that are built in to this front grill. Now the front grill is this polished aluminum trim with this big chrome Hyundai logo right in the middle and then it's matte black at the bottom. Now that matte black is going to continue throughout the car and if you're looking for the headlight unit this is your main headlight unit that includes your turn signals the LED lights and this is pretty much it. even if it's set in this trim piece that looks like it's going to channel the air through here it doesn't it's not open on the side now there's two different engine options available for the santa cruz and we're going to take a look at the base one right now and here it is the base engine for 2023 is this 2.5 liter four cylinder engine producing 191 horsepower 181 foot pounds of torque made it to an eight speed automatic transmission with shiftronic now a lot of people complain that this is not a very powerful engine if that's your thing, if you want to have more powerful one, you have to upgrade to the SEL Premium or Limited, and then you'll get the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine that's a lot more powerful at 281 horsepower, 311 foot-pounds of torque. So those are two different engine options available. Now, if you look at the setup right here, you can see that there's some sound insulation, still no hood struts, just this prop stick right here, which I wish that was replaced as well. Whether the Santa Cruz is a pickup truck or not is an open debate. And in my personal opinion, it's not. It's just an SAV. And that's exactly what Hyundai refers to it as. Now, there's some differences between the pickup trucks and the sport activity vehicles, which we have. Actually, we have three on the market right now. And that's this, the Santa Cruz, the Honda Ridgeline, and Ford Maverick. Those are all unibody construction. So basically, a unibody chassis. And you can see that, that this is a whole one piece. There's no separation between the cab and the bed. And that's what you'll see on the regular pickup truck. Now, the regular pickup trucks in this category would be like a Toyota Tacoma or maybe a Jeep Gladiator, GMC Canyon. So, uh, I mean, we have some competition between the two. Each of the types of the vehicle have their advantages and disadvantages and it really depends on what you want to use it for now the body on frame it's usually a stronger setup it has a larger payload as far as carrying it's more set up for utility than comfort 
Uh, now, the unibody construction is going to give you a better ride quality. It's going to be more comfortable and it's going to give you a little bit of utility. But if you want to tow something heavier or put some heavy stuff in the bed, you might want to consider a real pickup truck. Now, let's take a look at the design of it. I do like this uh, blue stone color on it. It looks really, really nice. I do like this uh, trim that uh, basically is all around the vehicle, starting from the front and continues at around the wheel at the bottom you know this is a, a protector so if you do take it off the beaten path you're not going to damage the nice paint on this vehicle as far as the wheels and tires we have the 18 inch wheels 245 by 60 is the tire size and then you have this two-tone rim it is not my favorite design a lot of people like it so this is very subjective definitely now on this particular one we see no chrome or no shiny pieces anywhere and that's because it was all blacked out you do have the uh, roof rails right on top that are black, black door handles, black portions of the mirrors right there and the black surroundings of all of the windows. Now this vehicle as far as the size is 195 inches long so it is on the larger side and the bed well, we're going to talk about the bed once we get there, but let's check this out. Now, the top of the mirror is the same color as the rest of the vehicle. It does have a turn signal and blind spot assist that's built in it. And then you do have the smart entry system. As you can see, I just press the button in order to lock it or unlock it. As long as I have the key somewhere on me, you don't have to press any keys and the buttons on the remote. So the first thing that pops in the back, of course, are the taillights. I do like the design of it. They're also nice, bright and visible because they are fully LED taillights. Now you do have this handle right here with the Hyundai that's basically embossed in the handle itself. The rear view camera, Santa Cruz embossed in the gate. And this one has the optional H-Track, which is an all wheel drive system. And I do like the design of this bumper now it is a utility bumper it has even three steps one in the middle and two on the sides to help you grab something from the inside and it does have the reverse lights and the reflector lights now i don't see the tow hitch on it because it's not equipped with it but with the h track this vehicle can tow 5,000 pounds where the front will drive about 3,500 now this is a soft open let's pop this open and let's see how much room we have and here it is, this is the bed. Now the total length of the bed is about 52.1 inches. So over four feet, which is not bad at all. Now, if you look up on top, before we get to the bed itself, you can see that it does have a third brake light up on top as well as the illumination for the gate. And this particular one with this activity pack also has a tonneau cover, which you can basically nicely pull over and hide any of the cargo that you have. It is lockable so you can latch it and you can unlatch it and let it go, open it up. Now uh, it's about 42.7 inches in between and the wheel wells over here. So if you wanna uh, you know, carry something that is wider, I mean, it can fit on this shelf basically right on top and that's gonna give you about 48 inches or so. Now there's a lot of clever things inside of this bed, including this C channel locks. Basically you can uh, adjust it to the position that you want. If you wanna tie down something, you have the tie downs right in front, two of them and two of them in the back. You do have the illumination inside of this bed and then you do have a storage compartment right here on one side. Let's open it up. Let's see what we have inside. This is a storage compartment. Now on the other side, in the same storage compartment, you also have a outlet. So you have the regular household outlet. Um, it is rated for uh, 115 volts and 150 watts. So that's what the rating on it is. And a pretty cool feature, which we've seen on the on the ridge line, for example, it is this. How oh, did I lock it? I locked it. See, it's lockable. There you go. It is this area right here, which is basically your trunk within the bed. And you can actually put some stuff in here. This is waterproof, so you can put some ice in here, throw some cans of pop or beer if you're doing some tailgating. And there you go. And of course, if somebody gets locked up in here, not sure how looking at the size of it, but they can actually unlock themselves using this latch system. If you're wondering if there's any space in the back seat, there's a little bit, but as a six foot tall, 
having the front seat adjusted to my regular driving position, I am touching this seat. It would be doable for a short term, but on the longer drive, it might get a little bit uncomfortable. I do have, however, about three inches, maybe more above my head, so headroom is not an issue, and the shoulder room is there. Now, there's a very limited adjustment as far as the reclining of the back seat, so it's pretty straight up. So it is actually more of a driver-oriented vehicle. But let me show you the rest of this interior. Let's start with the door panel over here, and what do we have? This is all hard plastic material, and that's what that seems to a lot of Hyundai and Kia vehicles are using. They're not even trying to make it soft or plush or anything like this. You do have a door handle, you have the window control, and the cup holder, and I'm glad that it's here because this is the only place where you can store your drinks in the back. Now, you do have the seat back pockets in both of the driver and passenger seat. Middle console is blank. You don't have anything. You don't have any connectivity as far as the charger or anything like this, which I wish that was improved. And you know, as far as the seats, see, they're pretty straight up. They are covered in this somewhat tough material, but uh, that might be good because if people are using it for utility and carrying stuff, this is actually not a bad thing. Now, this, I thought it was an armrest, but it doesn't fall down. The only thing that you can do is extend basically the headrest for the third passenger if you have one, and that is the only adjustment. Now, a pretty cool thing is this window that slides open and allows for this more of an air pass-through in here. And another innovation that I do like on here is the ability to fold the seats up like this. If you have more stuff that you need to put inside and you do have those cargo containers underneath them, which is pretty cool. And now before we get inside, let's uh, listen to this door close. Boom pretty heavy door actually it's a nice and solid thud right here you do have this trim that we didn't see in the back so it's a little bit more fancy in the front you still have the door handle of course mirror window lock controls a little bit more storage underneath and the only padded portion is right here now if we go inside this vehicle you can see that the driver's seat has some power adjustment but the passenger, you have to adjust it manually. Same material that's used on front and back seats. And let's jump inside, I'll show you the rest of it. Here's the interior of this 2023 Hyundai Santa Cruz SEL package. As you can see, it's uh, pretty nice, right? I mean, it does have some technology. We're gonna go over some of the features in here. I do like how the dashboard sits. It does have this kind of two-tier design, a little bit of a it's carbon fiber looking trim, but definitely not the real carbon fiber, but I like how the vents are obviously right on the side, but they're nicely incorporated. And also right on top in here, and you have the hazard lights speaker right on top. Nothing else is here. Now this is soft plastic, which is nice. And then you do have the 10.25 inch display on this activity package vehicle. Now, as far as the steering wheel, it is decent, okay? It's not leather wrapped or anything like this, but it's nice to the touch. It's a good size. It does have some buttons on both sides. Now, on the right-hand side, you can see this menu button that controls what's going on in the instrument cluster. And then you have the cruise control, adjustments for the cruise control, stop and repeat for the tracks. And then, of course, this is up, down, and okay to select what you see on the screen. Now you have different modes. The mode is actually an adjustable button, customizable, as well as the star button. You also have the volume and mute, the voice control, and then you do have the Hyundai logo right in the middle. 10.25 inch instrument cluster. This is an upgrade, and this is a part of this activity package on this particular vehicle. And let's see what we have here. So you have a digital display on the right hand side you have the tachometer left hand side you have a speedometer and then we can go through some of the features in here so you have the drive info user setting and again you can customize it you can customize the cluster here wiper lights display icy road warning welcome sound theme selection we can link it to the drive mode i'm going to see it uh, what's going on here and then let's go back to the previous screen and that's pretty much it so you have the lights door setup convenience units reset oil change reminders etc there's quite a few features going on in here and then of course you have the tpms and then you have the lane keep assist 
down at the bottom you can see it uh, averages 8.5 miles per gallon this is not good it should be 23 combined city and highway 21 the city 25 on the expressway but the vehicle has been idling it's only got 13 miles on so now we're back to the drive info so this is the upgraded instrument cluster the 10.5 digital is an upgrade and like i mentioned before it's part of this activity pack that includes some of the other features and i'm going to talk to you all about it in just a little bit the way you start and stop the vehicle or the engine i should say it's right over here and this is the basic screen now there's certain advantages of it one of them to the basic screen that you do have the android auto and this is an android auto which is wireless i have my phone connected here and it's nice it's visible it's pretty sharp display and you have all the features of it otherwise you know you can go back to the hyundai menu and we have the all menus button right here again phone blue link radio media voice memo quiet mode valet mode setup notifications let's go back to the voice memo and quiet mode those are two features that i really like one of them allows you to record a short voice memo and retrieve it at the later time so you don't have to look for a pen quiet mode limits the output of the front speakers while muting the rear speakers all together now you do have some shortcuts right here you have the radio which you're going to turn off media you have the button that you can customize if it's not that should yeah it should give me the option right here custom button non-home quiet mode display on and off phone projection phone bluetooth audio one of those features can be assigned to this button then you have another on the steering wheel and the mode button on the steering wheel and those are different options that you can assign to it so it's back to the all menus basically and let's go to setup so to see what's here sound display here's the button setup right here as far as the display let's see illumination automatic blue light filter we can turn that on or off i mean that's gonna give you a less strain on your eyes screen saver home screen media change extend rear camera use reset if you want to go back to the settings that the factory set it up with and while we're talking about the camera let's put it in reverse and let's see what it looks like so decent camera quality i mean there's nothing you know as far as this camera here there's different uh angles here yeah, there's two angles top down and this and this is pretty much it and now you have the active trajectory lines let's put it back in park and see what else we have so you have the climate control now let's see if it's an automatic climate control it's not just a regular one so you can kind of go by feel of where the temperature is this is cooler and hotter and then some shortcuts as far as where the air is coming out from down at the bottom you have two usb type a ports and you have the regular 12 volt power adapter and you see this marking right here for the wire wireless charging and the tray is right over here so here's your gear shifter and like i mentioned before about the transmission we got the shifting so you can basically put it in drive and move it to the left and go up and down to shift manually and let's put it back in park now you have the cup holders rather large and over here you have the hill descent assist you have the a rear view camera you can turn that on and then auto hold for your brakes electronic parking brake and then you have your center differential lock now you do have the heated seats for both driver and passenger and a little bit more storage right underneath here if we move up on top you see just a regular mirror nothing too crazy and then you have your lights and the sunroof control now sunroof is also part of the uh, activity pack and then you have the lights that you can turn on and we do have the illuminated mirrors now the illumination is right up on top so this is what you have in the interior take it for a spin before we take it for a spin, it's good to know of how much these vehicles are. So the SE, which is the base trim, starts at 25.7. The SEL, 28.190. The night package, 
36060, the SEL Premium 37600, and the Limited 40,570. So, you know, it's cool because that starts at 25.7. If you don't want all those bells and whistles, you can get a pretty decent vehicle for about 26 grand. Now, this is a front wheel drive option, and that's with the smaller engine than what we have here. Now, the SEL trim, it's a 28,190, but the one that I'm sitting at right now has the activity package and here's what the activity package includes i'm going to read it so i don't forget anything power sunroof integrated tonneau cover adjustable c-channel cleat rail system roof side rails 115 volt ac power inverter in bed 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster wireless device charging led interior lights and bed lighting and the rear sliding glass now that is a three thousand one hundred and twenty dollar option so if that's something that you like that's going to bring the total msrp to over thirty one thousand dollars this particular one with a few other options like the first aid kit mats uh, filtered uh, fitted liners mud guards cargo net and bed uh, it comes as a 34805 so that's pretty close to the SEL Premium. And the reason I say that pretty close to the SEL Premium because SEL Premium comes standard with the bigger and more powerful engine. And that's where a lot of people were saying, hey, you know, this 191 horsepower engine is not powerful enough. Well, let me take it for a spin and let's find out. Now, before I take it on the road, I'd like to check out the turning radius and see how tight it is. And I do it with my archaic way of uh, counting the parking spaces to see how tight it is. So let's see. We have one, two, three, four, and a good half, maybe three quarters, four. And yeah, it's getting on to almost uh, five parking spaces. So it's not as tight as, for example, the Hyundai Tucson, which I thought it was almost the same, but that one did it like 4.5. Well, you know, this is not a very scientific method, so maybe they're pretty close. Now it feels fairly tight as far as the suspension and the steering is just the right tightness to me. It's you know, it doesn't require a lot of effort, but it requires some, and it gives you that really nice feedback on it. So far, okay, nothing to complain about as far as the engine. Maybe just a little bit noisier than some of the other ones. Well, let's see how fast it goes. Okay, so now we finally got to 60 miles per hour. So yes, uh, the 2.5 liter turbo, it's definitely a lot more powerful. So if you have a chance, test drive both of them. Maybe you don't need that much power, but if, you, if this one is too sluggish, the other one has a rocket comparing to it. So this one, definitely not the fastest vehicle out there. And then of course, we're on the same road that I, I test a lot of my Hyundai vehicles. So the tires are a little bit more aggressive. So you can hear a lot more of a road noise coming in from the outside, not too bad i mean it's not something that's very obstructive i mean but you know you can definitely hear the tires when you turn when you corner this vehicle feels different than for example a gladiator or a tacoma would be definitely is more planted on the road and it is more comfortable drive now let's not kid ourselves now i don't mind the pickup truck drive at all so i mean to me it wouldn't be an issue but a lot of people like to have this more comfortable more plusher right and that's what you'll get with you know the hyundai santa cruz and this is definitely a perfect vehicle for someone who likes to maybe go camping and throw some of your camping gear or maybe a couple bikes and you know climbing gear anything like this but you don't have to have to get to your destination through some serious off-road and the two reasons why i'm saying that one that the total payload in this vehicle which is also important is about 1500 pounds it's actually a little bit less unlike the sel premium it's about 1411 pounds and 
that includes everybody that's in the car and all of the equipment that you have. So you have four people like me, there's your 800 pounds or so, well, a little bit more, but, <laughs> but there you go. So you're only limited with about 600 pounds to what you put in the bed. So you have to consider that. Now, as far as the towing capacity, I mean, 5,000 pounds would definitely pull a couple jet skis, maybe a small boat. So, I mean, I wouldn't be too concerned about it because most of the people with the smaller SUVs or SAVs would probably not drive or not pull any huge boats or trailers. You have the ability to pull up to 5,000 pounds if it is all-wheel drive and if it's equipped with this trailer braking system. Now, driveways, it feels good, and you know, there's no complaints. You sit up just a little bit higher than on the regular uh, vehicle, just about the same as on the uh, Tucson. So, I mean, you do definitely have a nice visibility. The mirrors are the right size. I mean, if you look in the back, of course, if there's nobody sitting in here, you, you somewhat have a limited visibility in the back, maybe even because of the sliding glass in the middle, but it's not horrible, it's not bad. And you do have all of the technology in it. Now, the highest trim level, and this is not even on the SEL Premium, I don't think you can get it, but those, it has the blind spot monitor which displays what's going on on the right or left hand side depending on which you know, side you turn your turn signal to. Uh, this one doesn't have it and the SEL Premium doesn't have it either. Overall, a decent vehicle. Now, if it was me, I'd definitely spend a few thousand dollars extra, 34.8 to 38, about, well, almost $4,000 extra, but I will get the SEL Premium. That would be my choice. Maybe even splurge and go for the limit that if you like, you know, that type of stuff. So actually, it depends on what you're looking for, but this is not bad. It's comfortable. It drives well. Decent gas mileage, not a hybrid, you know, 21 in the city, 25 on the expressway, 23 is the combined number. So for a four-cylinder, rather large displacement, four-cylinder, two and a half liter, it's not, it's not bad at all. Well, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you learned at least one thing. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you liked that video, leave me a like, and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.